Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome back. I know I've had a long absence. Uh, I'll explain all that in this video. As you all saw from the George Bush SD70 AC video, we're not at the old layout anymore. We're at a new one. Um, we're going to talk about that in this video. Uh, we're going to explain uh, improvements on this layout over the old one. We're going to have some fun, so let's go ahead and take a look. A whole lot bigger than the old one. To give an overview real quick, from this wall over here to this wall over here is about 20 foot. The sump pump room that you see right there is about three feet. So it's about 17, 16, 17 feet from that wall to this wall, which is the main area of the table here. So you got about a 16 and then from that wall to this wall right here is about eight foot. So we got about a 16 by eight foot layout. A little siding over there goes all the way to the wall. So it's about 20 foot for, for this particular um, amount of trackage right here. Um, so to give a brief description of why we're here now, for those of you that aren't a whole familiar of my absence, I had a girlfriend I met in 2013. I met her, I started dating her, and I kind of just went off the map from that. And a lot of people saw that I trickled in model train videos in here and there. Um, didn't really do a whole lot with the trains when I met her because I didn't know how she would react to everything. But then she found out I like, that I like trains and she actually told me she likes trains a little bit. Not as much as I do. But she does like trains, so I um I was happy that um she liked trains and uh and she was able to tolerate with my liking of trains. So we managed to be together for three years. In 2016 I got engaged to her, so she became my fiance. And last year, 2018, we got married in August. Um we moved in here into this townhouse that we're in now. And about four or five months in, I finally perked up and said, after I was starting to move some of the train stuff out of my parents' house, it was like, it's really time for me to want to try and start the layout again. Try and get some trains up and running and fill the empty basement. So the when we got this place, the basement was already fully furnished. The walls were painted. The carpet was on the floor and everything so it was like this was the this is where the, the layout's got to go this is perfect so made all that decision and then i started coming up with the track plan and i'll describe the track plan as we go the layout itself is consisting of seven tables four main tables this is constructed modular um so there's seven tables Four main tables kind of make up the basic of the uh, two loops. Two tables all the way in the back that make up the engine facility and the yard area. And then the seventh table makes up the siding over here. Um, a lot of people that if you are watching and you've been watching me through the years would know that the old layout basically only consisted of two loops. That was it. You could only, you could, you had to put trains on and off with your hands. If you wanted to change something, run something else, you had to put it on, pick it up and put it down with your hands. And that was kind of it. Well, with this, as you, as I've, as I've said, we got the engine house, engine facility, and we got the yard now. That's one of the improvements I'm happy with. I've always wanted a layout with a yard and an engine facility. Second improvement, for those of you that know, throughout the years, some of you might not know this, that the old layout, believe it or not, did not, I repeat, did not have 072 curves on it. So all those times I made the videos of all the big engines, you, you might have read through the comments, some people would say that, um... How did you get the engine to go on the 060 curves? I didn't modify the engines at all. They just managed to get around those curves. 
But on this layout, we could finally run any big steam engine on these curves. We are at maximum curve size, or should I say minimum required curve size for all the big articulated engines. Um, so you could bring any large steam engine over here and it'll run perfectly on this layout without any problems. Another improvement that you can see, for those of you that remember the old layout, um, you couldn't really transition trains from the outside loop to the inside loop on the old layout because those switches were 036. So you could never really run the, the big boy or the Allegheny or any of that stuff through those switches. So you, that's why I said you always had to pick up with your hands and put down with your hands the trains depending on which loop you wanted them to run in. Well, I'm happy to say that we can finally run trains straight out of the yard right inside to the to the inside loop. That is one thing I'm extremely happy about with this layout. Not only did we upgrade to bigger switches, all 072 switches, by the way, on this layout. There is no switch size smaller on this layout at all. All the switches are 072s. Not only are all the switches 072s, they're also all command control switches. Literally. 12 command control switches. Now, before everybody goes up in arms and says that this that this whole layout, which, by the way, all new track, nothing was kind of really reused of the old layout track for this layout. Basically, all new track here. So, before everybody goes up in arms about, wow, this was really expensive to set up, Yes, I understand it was really expensive to set up. Do I really want to talk about the price in this video? No. Um, we're just here to overview this layout. I don't really like talking about prices about anything in any of my videos because it just leads to arguments and stuff, and it's just not really worth getting into. Anyway, moving on. But yes, all command control 072 switches are now in this layout. So I could just pick up my remote when I have track power, pick a switch, throw it, and go on about my merry way and have some fun running trains. Another thing that I finally am happy about with this layout, we have now isolated sightings. And what I mean by that is all these toggle switches right here, except for this very last one, Still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it, if I need it. Everything in the yard and the siding over here are all isolated from, from power until I flip the switch and give power to the loop, the, the siding itself. So what do I mean by isolated? Well, we'll take the engine facility, for example. As you can see, there's three yards right there. The switch is in the off position right now. So if I were to turn the transformer on and apply power to the yard, power will not go to those sidings until I flip this toggle switch to give power to that particular siding. So that was one big thing that I was happy to do with this layout because it allowed me to not put power to a siding on the layout or a piece of track on the layout without, um, you know, putting unnecessary amounts of voltage to the boards on a locomotive or burnout light bulbs in cars. So this finally allowed me to save some power um, in areas. Um, I might go and I might make a separate video and explain how that whole um, isolated setup is with uh, fast track I don't know how to really do it with real tracks or any other track but there are other there are people out there who probably already know how it's done but I can make a video for those that don't know how it's done and probably want to attempt to try it so another improvement that we that we have here is that we now use both sides of the transformer the way that they should be used in my opinion um, so the yard, the yard side, as I call it, is from here, 
this is where that isolation technique came in. Right here at this point is where the main line power and the yard power are separated. So when the transformer is on and I throw this handle of the transformer up, power is going to the yard side only. That means the engine facility and all the yard tracks. The right hand side of the transformer only applies power to the main line, the main lines as I call them. So when I'm done putting trains together in the yard and the engines leave and exit onto the main line, I can literally just cut, shut the power off to the yard and just run the main line track. Now for those of you that remember the old layout, it was the left handle on the transformer was powering the accessories and then the right hand handle was powering the track all, all the time. No matter what track it was, it was always powering the track. So that was another great thing that I was happy to improve upon on this layout. Another thing that improved upon on this layout compared to the last one is we now, um, I have now prevented power drops going through on both loops. What do I mean by power drops? Or for those of you that don't have real layouts on table set up, what power drops are is after you get away so far from, say like for instance, I have my transformer, which is this, with, the way I'm getting ready to describe this was kind of how it was, how it was set up on the old layout. On the old layout, it was, I had the red and black wires running through the TIU, and the TIU wires went to the one section of 10 inch track. That's where the power outputted to, just this one piece of track. And that went throughout the entire, powered the entire layout. But on that, but on that layout, power drop was pretty heavy. And I didn't even really realize what power drops were until I started reading articles and everything. Basically what power drops are, if I was only having power going to this section of track and your locomotive got all the way to that other side of the layout, you're, you're, the amount of power that you got as you go along is decreasing. So when you get to that, your motors kind of start to struggle a little bit, your smoke output starts to dwindle a little bit, and maybe your lights might start to dim a little bit. So what we finally did with this layout was every six foot, there's red and black wires going to some piece of track in the loop. And that finally allowed me to make sure there was constant amounts of power going through through to all through the the train, the engines. This way everything's getting its max output as it should. Um, the only place where there's not six foot power power wires going is in the yard because the yard is not where trains are running 99% of the time. So there was no, no need for it at all. Another thing that I was finally happy to do with this layout is what I call hide the eyesore. Um, the, uh, the legacies, the legacy I like to see sitting up because the lights look nice and everything. But I finally got to hide that eyesore I call the TIU. Love the MDCS system, by the way, but it's just an eyesore. So finally, I was able to tuck that sucker right up underneath the layout and camouflage it. That way you don't have to look at it. Same with the WIU. I kind of hid it under here so that way you don't have to look at it while you're looking, running all the trains. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go underneath. I'll show you the uh, power block distributor and we'll go and uh, we'll go to the, uh, as you can also see, the hole. So here's the power block distributor. So right here at the bottom is where your powers go in. This is going to the voltage fixed input one side or the output side one of the TIU. By the way, the output side voltage fixed one goes um, from the uh, runs to here. And then the yard side goes to the TIU uh, output two. Some of you might know, maybe might know, 
that if you just apply power straight to the TIU from the fixed voltage too, it doesn't send out the uh, signal to all the DCS engines. So I have a power brick that constantly powers the TIU when I'm not using the main line track side of the, uh, of the layout yet. Um, that's something you could kind of look up in the DCS manual. I think it describes it. Anyway, we're now here in the cutout. Um, there was two reasons for this cutout. Main reason was I finally wanted to stand in the middle and watch my trains go around me. Plus, it also gives some good photographic views, as you can see by this example. Be using this um, look a lot, hopefully, in the future. But the other reason why was because if I... The uh, second reason, there's three reasons why I had to do this hole. The second reason was if something derailed here in the yard, I didn't want to have to climb up on the table and try and come over here and fix it. So that was another reason. And the third reason is, you can see it right here, my electrical panel is behind this door. And if I ever have to get to it, I don't want to have to climb all over the layout. So, just come in the middle of the layout, open up the door, Excuse me. And uh, I have access to the panel. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now we can talk about the yard a little bit. <clears throat> the yard is four tracks. It's four tracks, but it's set up as three. And what I mean by that is, when I originally built this loop, or this uh, yard, it was only going to be a three track yard, um, but then it turned to four. And the only reason why it turned to four was I was able to kind of squeeze the fourth siding into the third siding. So if you look right here, there's a switch. That switch, like all the switches on the layout are all command control. So this way, all I have to do is break the train that's going to go into the, these two sidings in half and then I could just shove the first half right into the rest of the siding. Um, and like I said, all these sidings are isolated except the very back one. And the reason why the all of them are isolated except the back one is because right where, the, where I was going to run the wires to isolate the top siding is where two tables met. And by the time I had started laying all the track down, the um, tables were already bolted together. So I was like, you know, I've already laid so much track down that I'll just leave this siding powered constantly. It won't bother me at all. Now, the engine facility is kind of how the whole layout started. This is, this is the designated starting spot of the layout. When I designed this layout, it all started with the engine facility in mind. So, the yard came second. When I, uh, when I was building this. So, everything started with this corner of the room right here. So, I had set up the whole engine facility and then set up the yard. That's when I could figure out how long my loops were going to be able to be to run the trains on uh, on the main line. So like so like I said, everything relied on the uh, everything relied on first starting with the engine facility. The engine facility is three tracks, as you can see, um, occupied all by the Pensy steamers, uh, the M1, the I1, the K4, and the H10. I'll occupy that. And uh, and like I said, I love the fact that I now have a yard and an engine facility. I could just park the engines right there, and it kind of looks a little busy. Now, I kind of wanted to talk about why I think it's fun to have a yard and an engine facility on a layout. While I know O-Gage, it's kind of tough to really have a yard and an engine facility because... As most know, O-Gage is kind of a space, uh, space hog. The reason why I like to have a yard and an engine facility on this layout is because, as most people know, 
you could kind of lose the want to play with the model train after seeing it go around in circles in two loops or one loop constantly after a while. When you have an engine facility and a yard, you kind of broaden your horizons when it comes to the play value. Because when you have the yard, you can kind of start shoving cars in and out of different orders and set yourself up for the next time you want your engines and trains to hit the main line. So take, for instance, those two Lionel Pensy GLA hoppers that are right there. Say I wanted to put them at the front of the train. Well, now what I have to do, instead of cheating and just picking them up and putting them at the front of the train, I can now take the B&O GP30 there, which is my kind of right now my designated yard switcher engine, and have it fish out the, um, the whole consist here, take it out on the main line to kind of shove it out of the way while I do my work. By the way, one thing I did forget to mention, because I have to separate these two, I, needed, I wanted to find a way to be able to split them without cheating. Right here, this piece five inch section, and there's a five inch section right here, or two fast track on coupling um, sections. I have the the boxes that throw the, uh, or activate the uncoupling tracks. I just need to get them wired up to the front of the layout where I could do it without being in the hole here. Anyway, so I wanted to, so if I wanted to put those two hoppers at the front of the train, well now I could finally do all that without cheating and picking it up and putting it down. So my little piece of advice is, if you build a layout and you know you're going to have a lot of room, I strongly suggest instead of having a big main line, kind of have yourself two smaller main lines and give yourself room for either a yard or an engine facility and a yard because it just adds that just that little bit more play value in my opinion because another thing that I like about having this was as you can see when trains are in their engine facilities, what is happening? The main line is clear. So I kind of set myself up and I put this in my head as I kind of write my own rules for this, for this railroad, is that when there's no trains running, the main line is not to be occupied at all. So that means all the engines and all cars are in, designated, in their designated spots at the end of the running period. So that's what we have here. Now you're probably saying, well, isn't the GP30 technically on the main line? No, not really, because it's still within yard limits. So that was so that's one thing I'd like to encourage everybody. If you have room to build a proper layout, maybe think about putting in a yard or an engine facility. Because then it just sets you up to just have that little bit more play value. So I really encourage that. Well, like I said, O-Gage is kind of a, a space hog, but it's definitely worth that extra little bit of play value that you have. Um, one accessory that I want to point out that is joining the layout, and I highly encourage this accessory whenever possible, and you can look at it right here. Eric Siegel is kind of one of the reasons why I got this, but... The, the Lionel Bluetooth radio tower. I can't speak enough for this accessory. I love this thing to death. And the reason why I do is because I don't really talk about my music choice a whole lot, but I like to put, I have on my phone some of the old 1930s, 40s, big band jazz and the war era kind of music. That, you combo that with running the old steamers compared to your diesels. Or you can run your streamlined diesels. But then it kind of just listening to the music kind of steps you back in time. Just that little bit. And that's what I love. I love that the fact that now with this expanded layout. I can kind of step back. Kind of have like a little bit of a realistic operation with a yard. A switcher engine. The main line the music of the era. It allows me to kind of step back in time. 
So now the next part, well, Matt, what's after this? What else do you have to do with the layout now? Well, one thing I'd like to eventually get around to, none of the buildings at this current moment are lit. The only, the only operating building, like I said, is the tower, the radio tower. And the only reason why it's operational is because it's plugged in right here with the 10-inch track section that Lionel offers. So eventually I do want to get everything wired up and working again. But not all of them are going to be able to get wired up and working. Mainly the fire station because you have to have a push button to activate it to start it to work. I mean, it still lights up when you don't have it push activated. But it take a whole lot of time to try and get that push button system to work. For those of you that have this firehouse, you know the struggle that it is sometimes to get it to set up to work right. Um, now to go on to the next part. Um, that I want to talk about. Everybody's probably going to ask, Matt, what's your current fleet? It's been years now, and I know we've seen some things come and go. So what's the current fleet? Well, kind of break it down to you. As I said, occupying the engine house facility is the Lionel uh, Pensy M1B. That's the 2008 release. Uh... First stall in from the M1B is the I-1 Decapod um, with the long haul tender, number 4628, it's MTH Premier. Uh, far engine house stall occupied by uh, Pennsylvania Railroad MTH Premier, uh, K4 number 1361. And sitting right in front of that is the MTH Premier, uh, Pensy H10 number 7676. The switcher engine, as I've pointed out, is a B&O GP30. Uh, it's an MTH Premier, part of Sound 3, uh, released a couple years ago. Um, the Pensy steam engines that are occupying the engine house are part of Sound 2. None of those are newer released uh, engines. Um, uh, still have the Vision Line Big Boy, number 4012. Um, as you can see, the uh, 20th Century Limited. Yes, I do have the New York Central Dreyfus Hudson. Um, the cars and the engine are MTH Premier. Um, the Dreyfus Hudson is Protosound 2.0, number 5445. Um, if you all want to see a video of that, comment that below, and I'll gladly make it, because all I have to do is put the engine on the track and get the engine to hook right onto the front and pull it out. I don't have to pick up the passenger cars anymore. Um, I also managed to get a... Uh, Protosound 3, uh, New York Central Mohawk. Um, had to have a freight engine to kind of run, run alongside the passenger train of the New York Central. So that's that. Um, I got a Class A, number 1218, MTH Premier Protosound 2. Um, now, as you're hearing all this, you're probably all saying, Matt, where's all the line out? Um, I kind of have to say... I've kind of backed off from Lionel recently. A lot of quality control issues. Um, I'm not as impressed with Lionel anymore as I used to be. I've kind of pushed my focus towards MTH because I love getting an engine out of the box and it worked right. Intermittently, when I was making videos every now and then and everybody would see me upload them, um, there were a lot of engines that I bought and I sold because I was just not happy with with the issues that I was hearing with them or I had gotten them and they were falling apart out of the box. So I would say now, viewers, that 90% of my collection is all MTH engines. 10% is Lionel. Um, don't get me wrong, Lionel's still puts out some engines with some great features in them but i just find it hard to be liking lionel as much anymore as mth i know a lot of people would probably say that mth is sounds they repeat themselves but you know same thing with the lionel ones they repeat themselves but the amount of detail 
and the kind of the amount that they kind of stuff into a package in the MTH engines compared to the extended startup sequences and all the sounds, MTH has kind of become my winner here recently over Lionel. So, will I probably still buy some more Lionel in the future? Yes, for sure. Just not as much as I, I will as MTH. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to introduce you to the new layout. I know it's uh, it's been a long time since I've made a video of the layout, so I encourage you all to keep coming back to the channel. Reintroduce friends that were once fans of this channel in the layout. Um, like I said, if any of the engines that I've mentioned in this video uh, that you want to see run, just comment below, and if I have the time, I'll find it, and I'll, uh, I'll definitely for sure make it. Thanks, guys, for once again tuning in, and I can't wait to see y'all, more of y'all. Take care.